Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Pankaj Khurana. I'm partner with PWC and have been uh, serving the government for past about uh, more than 20 years now. First few years, I have worked with the government itself and followed by a stint with Wipro and then uh, with PWC for about 12 years. So, friends, uh, as we know that, uh, you know, last one and a half years have been testing time for all of us uh, working in the corporate or government along with the government organizations. So we have been going through a very testing time of COVID-19, which created very, uh, you know, un unseen challenges for all of us. At the same time, it also gave us an opportunity to explore and uh, do some more uh, innovation in the technology uh, through thought leadership, through uh, bringing all the IT infrastructure, especially in government together to address uh, the growing need of, uh, you know, uh, technology for delivery of services or to uh, work from home environment. So uh, whatever investments corporates have made in the past few years or the government has been investing all throughout this uh, in, in last decade, came uh, handy and, uh, you know, uh, worth, proven worth uh, uh, in this time. And thanks to Digital India program, we had, uh, we could leverage the great connectivity available across uh, locations. We could reach to, government could actually reach to far-flung areas for delivery of education or services or health uh, 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 services to people at large. So this could be this could uh, be made possible only because of uh, available IT infrastructure, or I would rather say that the scalable IT infrastructure. Uh, while this has been, uh, we we could leverage uh, the technology to the extent possible. It has also given us opportunity to look at, re look at our technology investments re-look at the way we are we have been using data and uh, the IT infrastructure available with us and of course the security part of this because there was a lot of uh, uh, information which was flowing through these networks and applications which would otherwise uh, 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 became a serious concern for government at times uh, keeping the security security uh, challenges in mind. So with this, uh, I would request uh, other panel members if they have any views to contribute here and then we can start the discussion. Uh, yeah, so Pankaj, uh, you know, just to resonate, uh, resonate on what you just mentioned, uh, you know, uh, pandemic has basically changed the way um, people are conceiving work and, uh, you know, especially around, um, you know, the fact that Citrix always used to say that uh, work is not office and that came true, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, last year. So there were several instances where, you know, the customers, like you said, had made the investments and then they wanted to expand, uh, you know, uh, application security and accessibility, um, you know, for, for users working um, remotely. Initially, it was, you know, the step taken by the corporate, but very quickly, uh, you know, the government of India also uh, many departments came back to us on saying that, you know, how can we give remote access? And if you look at, uh, you know, all the earlier speakers today, um, it was very evident that, you know, we are living in a application led world and everything, you know, whatever, uh, even Mr. Joshi mentioned all the applications which are developed by NIC. So there is no running away from, uh, you know, application led world, world in the digital initiative and everything else in the IT infrastructure is subservient uh, to the application. So, uh, you know, so, so your views are absolutely uh, in view uh, with the times, uh, you know, whatever is happening in the current world. And uh, Citrix has been working, uh, like Vijay also mentioned in the previous speech, that, you know, Citrix has been working on the application delivery and security for over the last, you know, three decades. Sure. So uh, I think with this, uh, this gives me a uh, thought around uh, how, because I, I, if I, if I have to look at the fragmented uh, infrastructure and the applications which are running across the country, what could be a better example than railways? Uh, so uh, maybe I will have a to you would be that uh, we have seen that uh, during this time, while the systems are fragmented and now they have come together and integrated platforms have been created in the country especially while corporate has been doing it and now the government has also uh, you know enabled uh, 
integrated platforms during especially during this pandemic so i just wanted to understand that how have uh, you know mea been using technology to mitigate uh, these challenging challenges during pandemic time and especially in view of uh, you know you are delivering an important service uh, that is passport and uh, especially in view of uh, the e passport is in the plan for uh, you know uh, in the year to come so over to you golar yeah thank you thank you uh, uh, mr pankaj and uh, let me at the outset also thanks take observer to uh, bring me here i also greet all my co panelists who are uh, participating with this panel now quickly coming back to the question uh, i'll uh, pardon me the if there is some issue with because i am joining over phone i have just come back from a meeting so i could not even arrange my laptop uh, so yeah so going back to coming back to the uh, you know the topic uh, mr pankaj when we are dealing with security ex, uh, especially in passport seva program and uh, uh, ministry at large i'll say we have devised a mechanism that we call four prong strategy and these four prong strategy uh, typically uh, the data strategy the people strategy the process strategy and uh, the compliance strategy so these are the four prong approach which we have adopted in uh, passport seva pro- program at large also and ministry at large also now let let me take uh one by one when we are approaching uh, and adopting this uh four prong strategy now i'll start with the data strategy uh when i say data strategy typically what we have realized in passport seva program or in the ministry is most of the time uh, uh there is a problem identifying your workload uh now when i say identifying your workload what kind of Golok I think you have gone mute. Hello. Yeah yeah this is better now. This okay. So uh, yeah. in terms of yeah in terms of workload especially what we have done is we are fully control uh, uh of in terms of my data points when i say in terms of data points uh we fully understand what kind of uh, data we are dealing with in terms of fiduciary data in terms of public data uh in terms of configurable data in terms of uh personal data of the citizens so uh what i personally believe mr pankaj saying that unless you have this kind of a detailed dive down understanding your data sets well understanding your workload well and then accordingly devising which are the workload you ask me especially during pandemic uh because what we have also realized because uh, because the passport seva program is now has gone global all our uh, indian diaspora across the globe also accessing the same data center same applications and therefore some of my workload is hitting through cloud some of my uh, workload is access on premises data centers so the strategy of devising this kind of a data strategy is no which are the workload i should access remotely which are the workload i should uh, access you know uh, on premises kind of an environment so that is one of the mechanism which we have taken care very uh, you know judiciously and carefully and that is why probably as i said in spite of going global in spite of having some of my workload into the cloud i fully understand what kind of access what kind of authorization what kind of compliances what kind of workload segregation what kind of you no know, uh, work culture i need to develop in terms of access and authorization not only internal work culture but also my stakeholders and also citizen at large so that is the first prime important which i personally believe all of the government department have to take uh, this kind of approach so that you have full control and holistic visibility of your data you no know, at large the second is the people strategy now the people strategy as uh, you all might be knowing the passport seva program has gone ahead with a uh, business model that we call ppp business model where uh, again we have you no know, kind of a segregated between sovereign and non sovereign kind of a workload where 
all sovereign workload is taken care by our government officials uh, however non sovereign workload is you know bestowed upon the service provider and accordingly you no know, we have devised the uh, security layers right from my uh, data layers to os layer to application layer to uh, network and perimeter layers uh, to to my security operation center network operation center so that is another area i think in terms of skilling reskilling your workforce uh, devising a mechanism developing a work culture developing a kind of a digital ethics which probably i'll say passport seva we have achieved at least more than 90% and that's why probably we are again as i said when it comes to uh, security we are we are uh, dealing it very uh, you know uh, kind of a holistically and judicially Uh, judiciously the third 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 area uh, i'll quickly touch upon uh, the compliances no uh, processes and compliances uh, now this is another area where we again find a big miss let me quote a, exa- a small example here uh, recently what we realize uh, saying that there are a lot of fake websites on uh, who they are posing themselves as if they are the authorized websites of government of india and they started delivering uh, no kind of a in the name of passport services they are uh, duping especially the illiterate masses uh, and and people who are kind of a do not have access to computer and internet and they are going uh, lending to a travel agent and then are lending it to this kind of a fake websites now how do you deal this kind of a scenario and i am sure most of us including railway and all they 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 have lot of these kind of a fake websites and other things now if you have such kind of a scenario how do you deal them in terms of uh, compliances in terms of regulations whatever with the uh, land of laws available and believe me when i was you uh, know trying to go away with this kind of a fake websites none of the compliances none of the none of the uh, land of the law available with us could help me to deal with them and ultimately i have to talk to google find out saying that why are you promoting this kind of a website as a paid ad as a paid ad service in the google and suppose you as a applicant first you go and search for apply for online passport services the google will return to you with a with a hit saying that okay this is the website which is coming in the form of a ad and and poor citizens or the illiterate mass they get into it and get duped by the uh, these kind of a travel agents and other fellows so in such scenario uh, how do you deal with your compliances your regulations everything goes into uh, no stack and and then you have to adapt a different approach altogether and that's what i did so uh, the idea is when you are dealing with security especially when dealing with masses at large this kind of a mammoth government services this kind of a critical data uh, as i said the security has to be taken a holistic approach right from data strategy to people strategy to process and compliance strategy the other uh, two very important thing before i end always we take security नो कोई भी बात नहीं ऑडिट आएगा एंड आफ्टर ईयरली ऑडिट वो देख लेगा नथिंग ऑफ दैट सॉर्ट आई थिंक सिक्योरिटी हैज टू बी डेल्ट बाय डिजाइन इट हैज टू बी इंट्रेंजिक एट ईच लेयर व्हेन आई से ईच लेयर ईच सेगमेंट ऑफ योर नेटवर्क लेयर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लेयर एप्लीकेशन लेयर वॉट एवर आई नेम इट दैट हैज टू बी इंट्रेंजिक टू ईच ऑफ द लेयर इट हैज टू बी होलिस्टिक एंड इट हैज टू बी एंड टू एंड एंड इट हैज टू बी ट्वेंटी फोर बाई सेवन रियल टाइम No, it can't Absolutely. be on a kind of uh, saying that audit wala aayega and dekh lega so that's how so, i i i and it and that's how i put it thank you yeah thank you very much golak i think these are very pertinent questions and uh, especially around this fake fake uh, you know fake websites to deliver or e for issuance of passports have been a very you know uh, very prominent issue in the recent past and we have seen this happening with railways and other government agencies also so that brings me to our next question to dr gupta sir uh, uh, during this pandemic time especially during this uh, pandemic time we have seen there have been rise in security breach incidences on government platforms 
and especially whenever there is any uh, any special event happening there is a security breach recently we saw that uh, uh, prime minister's uh, twitter account oh, sorry uh, this twitter account was hacked it was on the day when uh, he spoke about banning the cryptocurrency so there was a statement which was made in the parliament and the very next day his twitter account was hacked do you see do you see the government investing government needs to invest more in capacity building and skill upliftment uh, not only of its officials but law, law uh, not only of law enforcement agencies but of uh, its officials at large uh good evening to everyone i am just returning from uh, my, after accepting my bsc degree in computer science and engineering from uh, lucknow so i am on the way so there might be a, a disconnection on the net so kindly excuse me during that period but i will try to be, get connected so well, first friends, of all uh, security is the main concept is, uh, basically so first of all many congratulations for your thanks another doctor degree uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot uh actually uh, you have put a very valid question it's a cat and chicken uh, cat and chicken situation where technology is improving the security lapses are also increasing so we have to work very hard and you were very right to say that there is a need of skill development in the area of uh, uh, security as we know that uh, in the present scenario law enforcement agencies are also very prompt to find out the entire security lapses how about they are also developing they are developing a lot of uh, skilled manpower not only from one domain they are taking from various domains the people and the developers from the it industry also i tell you there are certain organizations which are accepting the people from armed forces av air force army and uh, you say drdo any other organizations such as nic for the skill development people, uh, the skill uh, related to it industry so it is not only the industry which need the people related to it security only it is the domain also which is very important so i feel that the contribution of all and the development skill development in the entire all areas is going to play a very important role for our security uh, for our security of the entire cyber security basically i would also like to brief that uh, in the present scenario there are, uh, the government is also focus focusing through various programs the capacity building in the area of cyber security and the government is also laying uh, certain policies for this also not only this you might also be knowing that uh, recently the rbi has highlighted that cryptocurrency like bitcoins ethereum and dogecoin among their their various uh, these cryptocurrency which are posing lot of financial instability and uh, they are also putting various uh, threats to our financial institutions so right now as you have rightly pointed out that our honorable prime minister made the point in the parliament and they are really going to uh, bring a uh, bill to prohibit it all the cryptocurrency in india but they are also putting that we the government will facilitate a framework for creation of a complete official digital currency which can be uh, under the guide yes, hello absolutely. you are saying something yes you are audible sir no no i said uh, your point is very valid so uh, pankaj i think he's uh, he's dropped not able to hear okay. him okay no problem so uh, i think we can move move to next panelist uh, so uh, mr vijay my next question would be to you because uh, 
uh, what could be a complex network or systems than Indian Railways. So uh, in the current context, especially during this time, uh, I think one of the key challenge has been enabling secure access to the applications, especially in this um, uh, uh, you know multi-platform uh, environment, uh, remote desktops and uh, access of data. Uh, how do you think that enabling access to data and tools uh, from anywhere with embedded security is being provided or being enabled uh, in the railways? Uh, uh, yeah, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, to all my fellow panelists. Uh, and uh, Thanks, Tech Observer, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, actually, the uh, pandemic uh, and its aftermath, and it is still going on, uh, the, it has taught us a lot um, about uh, how to work from anywhere. Uh, but uh, in railways, uh, despite uh, being uh, a large number of IT initiatives uh, going on in IT, uh, railways also, we, our main work of providing services is most more or less physical. So uh, that cannot be done from anywhere. So those uh, employees have to anyway go there and work. But uh, for the people who are supporting them, that is the office uh, workers and the uh, people who are uh, providing the IT services, for them, uh, it has been a, a, a learning experience, I will say, uh, to tide through this uh, pandemic times and uh, continue to provide services and work. However, uh, the, some part of the pandemic in the initial period, uh, it was uh, uh, the services were curtailed, so there was not uh, much uh, pressure on us to provide people with uh, all those services but uh, slowly and slowly that has uh, that is coming back now coming to the initial questions which you have uh, because i was listening to that uh, conversation as well which is the integration and uh, providing secure access to uh, your all of your employees uh, integration is the uh, you know uh, need of the R. So uh, most of our internal applications are already integrated with each other, and we have to integrate with other applications as well, like uh, the Arug Setu and the Aadhaar and all that for a lot of authentication. Uh, but I will not go into those details at uh, how do we do it and what are the challenges we face. They are the challenges of every government department. Uh, when it tries to interface with each other, it faces anyway. And it will continue to face because uh, somehow or the other, we do not build our systems for in the uh, proper API and sharing mode. Uh, railways, in railways uh, and in Chris, we are taking a, you know, a step forward where we have uh, got a API gateway where all the applications will try to in get integrated through the API gateway and then uh, share with anyone within and outside as well. Coming to the security part, uh, security is a, uh, as everybody knows, is a PPT, not the uh, display kind, the people, process and technology. So we uh, somehow uh, put the technology in the front and then forget about the people and process. Uh, for a large organization like Railways, which has a, a close to uh, five half a million uh, endpoints uh, in terms of uh, uh, computer users uh, at office, home, and anywhere else, uh, it poses a very big challenge that these users keep on changing. So we need to train almost uh, seven, eight lakh uh, uh, of our users to be uh, adapt at using uh, uh, applications and using them securely. So even our password policies, uh, our uh, you know access policies, they need to be uh, taking care of the various level of employees we have. Not everybody is a um, computer savvy uh, employee. So in that sense, what I uh, feel is that in the capacity building part, 
I think the information security along with information science should be included in the curriculum, at least in the class 11 and 12th, where the uh, children, I mean, now they are like my children only. So they, they should come at, at least uh, basically prepared for uh, what is coming uh, uh, into their job, whether it is an office job, whether it is a, a field job, they have to come prepared with some sort of uh, cyber uh, knowledge and cyber hygiene knowledge as well. Um, I hope the uh, new education policy uh, will uh, have such uh, curriculum built into the class 11, 12th. Because uh, what we find is that we, when the uh, uh, these even the polytechnic and ITI holders come into the system as a technicians and all, they have zero knowledge about uh, the systems, how secure systems are supposed to be operated. They are very good at their mobile and they are very good at WhatsApp and Facebook and all that. They keep on doing it every day. But when it comes to uh, a system where they are supposed to, you know, uh, 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 protect their identity. They are supposed to protect their uh, OTP and all that, not share between themselves. It is there. There is there is a complete lack of uh, awareness and knowledge as well. So I think it should percolate down. Now it's high time that uh, we percolate it down to the schools and and maybe intermediate uh, uh, classes, so that we get at least some uh, what trained people here where we can we need to give only the application specific uh, training to them and then they can be productive uh, uh, very pertinent so, uh, very pertinent uh, to this discussions are dr gupta was also mentioning about the same can thing. i add a few points to this yeah, yes sir please can i add a few please, points sir, if please. you allow Yes, sir, please. Uh, actually, I just want to add that uh, the security and the flexibility of extending services, they are two uh, different uh, parts of uh, conceiving a facility to be extended. Because if you want to create a completely secure environment, then you can say cut off everything from the entire world. Okay. But for this reason, but you have to extend the services to people in different area. So again, there is a security uh, you can say there can be uh, security lapses so we have to see that what level of flexibility to extend our services we have to beat that's the important thing and for that we have to have an graded access of the systems so different people with different uh, roles and uh, privileges should have the access of facilities at different level so level of security the mitigation that is a very important thing. We should play a role in that. Not only this, in the present scenario, the privacy is also a very important factor as far as uh, we consider with the security. So privacy and security. I will give you an example. It can happen that using the homographic encryption or uh, whatever way you say that uh, the encrypted data may be uh, sent in motion or at rest, and then uh, data may be secured. The channels may be secured by various hardware mechanisms. So we can do that. There can be a mitigation policy. But when we extend these services, as you, we are saying right now, I am talking with uh, on phone, on the way. So we have scaled our access to this phone also. And this, uh, and you uh, see that the is the network has extended up to this level that I am able to talk to you. I am participating in the conference. So we have to mitigate, uh, we have to develop certain solutions to mitigate this kind of security lapses which may occur. So graded access to the information is the answer to that. That's uh, which I thought I'll share with you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, sir. I think this is very important, uh, Ashwini, that brings me to you because what we are hearing is the government perspective and how the government is acting on uh, some of the important capacity building, skills, data security, data accessibility, scalability issues. But from private sector point of view and the solution providers perspective in today's context with regards to application, availability, security and scalability, 
so if you would like to throw some light that how can we help or how can service providers like citrix can help customers create multi cloud hybrid application environments yeah absolutely pankaj and uh, i was you know i was just searching for a hand raise button somewhere that you know it was all coming in the sweet spot for citrix whatever mr vijay or dr gupta just uh, spoke about Uh, you know dr gupta uh, was very clearly mentioning uh, contextual access to information uh, which should be based on role so anybody who is into a particular role should be able to see uh, uh, information only to uh, his context and uh, uh, mr vijay also spoke about giving access uh, across various platforms and now you know the way I, you know the, the railways ticketing is happening previously it used to be go to the counter and book there and slowly it came on their own portal of irctc and now you can prop- practically book from any uh, travel agent so it's expanding rapidly so application only if you are not booking be. on the fake portal yeah, yeah only if you are not booking on the fake portal which is a menace any which ways and you know we recently saw a very large vulnerability uh, globally as well uh, so keeping that aside uh, you know if you look at if you look at the way uh, citrix has been uh, you know working over the three decades and we are probably a unique company which focuses only on applications uh, now look at uh, if you look at applications uh, uh, today uh, previously it used to be uh, you know hosted in your own data center today we are uh, you know you know using applications which are hosted on web which are uh, which are saas applications home grown applications monolith and you know microservices applications so there are various flavors of application and the users are also uh, you know they are not sitting in the office anymore like dr gupta said that he is on the road but still he is joined a conference uh, you know the, the byod is a reality today so there are people who are using uh, you know applications for us you know for example you and me we use it on our laptop we go to the office we use it on the desktop and when we are uh, you know on mobile we are accessing all our crms and internal and external applications on our mobile phones so the world has moved from any device to any applications hosted at any uh, platform uh, and access from anywhere in the world now you are accessing the it also increases the, you know the security requirement which are there and like dr gupta very clearly said that you know it has to be uh, and uh, golok also mentioned that it has to be end to end security and he's they are basically talking about a, a, a secure access secure edge kind of a platform where it's a zero trust uh, uh, network access uh, where every component every component of the uh, of the entire infrastructure is uh, i think somebody will have to go on mute my i'm hearing my own voice no worries yeah so i'll quickly conclude uh, uh, you know looking at the time uh, so you know these are all the uh, aspects which on which citrix works very very extensively and uh, you know we would be glad to meet some of the customers and you know uh, present to them on how uh, you know we can take these discussions forward and uh, really showcase uh, you, you know use cases to the customers on their live environments so oh, absolutely and um, uh, thank you very much for uh, bringing this uh, point over uh, this discussion i think uh, what we have seen during this time is that uh, the, the customer base has changed while it was while working in the government it was largely how the government was uh, delivering services i think now it has moved from instead of just the supply part it has also moved to demand so customer has also put or the citizen has all, uh, citizen at large has also put its demand very clearly of uh, accessing the services from anywhere especially during this pandemic time so that brings to another uh, important point that uh, uh, you know uh, during this time government government organizations have invested in technology and now there is a growing need of uh, having agile and uh, you know secure uh, adoption of uh, uh, next uh, level of technologies and delivery of services to so my next question is to mr amit sir uh, during this time uh, what, what in in the light of growing need of uh, you know upgradation of technology and uh, integration of uh, various applications various platforms spread across uh, various departments how are you focusing uh, uh, as a state as a state to deliver services to citizens uh, through one uh, one platform instead of going to multiple platform access them and then avail the services how do we integrate it better 
सो दैट दिस इज एसल फ्री सर्विस डिलीवरी बी इट एजुकेशन बी इट हेल्थ और बी इट जनरल सर्विस डिलीवरी ऑफ एनी ऑफ इट्स काइंड thank you pankaj and uh, thank you organizers for bringing me into this important discussion which is happening all across in fact uh, here i want to add up few things i have uh, listened most of the speakers the panelists and i personally believe that uh, this is very very important uh, to have a single uh, platform i fully endorse what actually is uh, actually you have put through i believe that uh, this is uh, the need of the hour we we need to actually have a single platform to offer government services rather than uh, having things being done in silos we have seen those uh, uts and those states who have already done it are actually living up to the expectations of the public the citizens and how easy it becomes for the citizens to deliver that this is something which we must understand that uh, today is the era where uh, you have to make things available at a single platform and uh, that platform definitely helps and here i want to add on few things like in jk uh, i am happy to share today morning only it got confirmed to principal secretary industry and commerce like for ease of doing business and those platforms we have integrated 126 services of different departments on a single platform through which one can go through and they are services of varied departments like you were naming be it education be it health be it any department which is offering public services directly and uh, in that context uh, you would see that more and more such models are evolving under ssdg also we are offering services uh, in time bound manner and uh, in that already so many services have got enlisted and here i want to add on like we are working upon lot of models in which uh, we are uh, uh, doing certain things like uh, through umang platform we are uh, offering services through uh, uh, you see especially those dbt model based services where direct benefit transfer is happening so we are working upon that thing that we offer it directly to the public and here i want to add on one thing just giving services does not make a difference here people should also realize what actually government is doing where public money is going where every single penny being received in the government exchequer or lying with the government uh, is going through and after the advent of ut model in jammu kashmir i must tell you that we have gone for very good works in that context i want to tell you pankaj like we have gone in for a, a good thing through beams the money goes for allocation to different ongoing projects developmental projects at the grassroots level project like uh, to uh, the budget estimation allocation and monitoring this is what beams is all about and in that the major thing is giving a window to the public empowerment of the public janta ki bhagidari that's what we call it public can see through every single project which is the feedback mechanism we have we have a, a novel mechanism in which we can have feedback of the public suppose money is being put into project a project b project c c maybe a bridge is coming up somewhere a road is coming a hospital is coming up first of all they can have access even up to the village level i'm saying up to the village level not only up to block level or state uh, upper level village level people can have an access and they can give a feedback not only pris public representatives but even for that matter any person any citizen can go there put up the feedback it reaches up to the top back again and we are making uh, uh, systems accountable for every single penny being expended out of government uh, exchequer and if some valid suggestion comes we incorporate that and make necessary changes and so we are right up to the lg level top from the top yeah. lg uh, sir is monitoring chief secretary sir is monitoring we are taking reviews we have online uh, redressal mechanisms in which directly uh, online grievances portal and lg sir directly addresses public i mean to say we have direct access to the villages pvc model we have implemented in which villages directly have access to secretariat to lg office to all the top offices which was a distant dream earlier 
so i personally believe that integrating services and this is the model we are working upon state data center is coming up a big way upgraded model we have got a 126 cr upgradation work going on by cdac so it is coming up in a month or so so we are integrating all the services here and we have also successfully launched e e office model we have made all offices of civil secretariat paperless both the civil secretariats in jammu and srinagar you know earlier there was a concept of darbar mo now 12 months really? both the secretariats are working so it's a revolutionary step taken in jk like secretariats are working people are having access to public services and we are bringing everything under a single umbrella as i just told you 126 services today morning the good news for you so that that's many what we are working with yes many yes. congratulations we've been doing such Amazing. similar thing as, as dr gupta mentioned that time i know we are in the we have just overshot by one minute but uh, just to conclude this dr gupta mentioned that uh, as the technology revolution is taking place so is the uh, it's it's increasing the threat of the security also with the integration and uh, you know accessible the over accessibility of the system so i hope that you are taking care of uh, such requirements on your network and your application level uh, with respect to data or uh, you know uh, uh, your systems uh, yeah in, sure in, uh, sure integrating all of this in fact we we are doing taking utmost care we are trying to implement all cert guidelines i have my ciso in place they take care of every single thing which is flowing inside in jk and not only that we are making a state of the art facilities in form of firewalls all kinds of advisories are being flown to every single department whenever services are being launched we try our level best but today is the era in which you would see just talk in the discussion only the twitter account of honorable pm got hacked so we are in an era when anything can happen any kind of cyber attack or thing can happen and we have to be mentally and technologically prepared So thank you very much for uh, uh, can, can can I just add uh, if uh, Pankaj uh, just give me a minute please, sir, please. I I would like to just add one thing that uh, this threat perception of security is sir you are you have gone mute Gupta, sorry sir, you have gone mute. I I I am saying that uh, the threat perception for every organization is different. and uh, as far as uh, security uh, implementation a particular department has to put different so some of spent certain other regions and some other organizations may have certain little uh, less uh, security uh, concerns and they can go with mitigation problem all mitigation methods also so it i That's think absolutely. it depends upon individual organization and i can sum up this with a hindi saying that uh, apni manzil khud talash kar rasta auron se puchega to bhatak jayega teri manzil ki ahmiyat jo tum jante ho aur koi nahi koi na jaan sakta hai arthat you have to see your organization absolutely so uh, i think sir has gone uh, got disconnected again so i was watching a series yesterday and there was uh, this lady asking is uh, you know uh, bodyguard ke mere liye fake passport ka intezam kar do so i hope kolak you are taking care of your security at that level also where uh, people crossing the immigration counters Uh, the validation process is in place along with the data security uh, along with the network security yeah. data and information security is also taking equal <laughs> importance so here comes the end to this uh, session gentlemen thank you very much for joining and sharing your views uh, i thoroughly enjoyed listening to all of you and i hope that all of you gained all of us gained some or the other uh, knowledge from each other so thank you very much nisha for arranging this and uh, arranging this and uh, thank you everyone